Thank you so much, Dr. Richardson, uh, for your inclusive leadership. And thank you, everybody, for being here. It's certainly an exciting day. Uh, I want to um, introduce uh, our incredible uh, interviewee today. I'm so excited to share the life path of our speaker. For Myanmar to Emmaus, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a kind of call. <laughs> kind, join us, please. Uh, Kain means strong in Burmese, and she was born and raised in Yangon, Myanmar, and she received her PhD in human security from the University of Tokyo. She has traveled to over 30 countries as a humanitarian worker and researcher, and she became exposed to uh, mothers and children who were smuggled and forced into prostitution, arms, and drug trafficking. This, along with her own personal experiences, motivated her to marry her ancestral recipes for face and hair products with a revenue stream that would support her philanthropic causes. In September 2016, she opened an incredibly beautiful store in Emmaus, Pennsylvania called Kinder Creations. And she takes advantage of a wide variety of organic farm products to create her chemical-free homemade products. In addition to motherhood and running a business, Kine is dedicated to bringing awareness to forced labor and to those who come together in preventing and minimizing crimes on humanity. She hopes that more people will appreciate the benefits of chemical-free living, which we will learn more about, and using organic and all-natural products. And I'm sure you've caught a glimpse of some of the beautiful products in the hall today coming in. They'll be there as you leave as well. I encourage you to check those out. And she's also not just a woman with passion, she's a woman with compassion, because she wants to empower the survivors who make these products with self-reliance and independence. Let's take a look at this clip that will tell us some more. Her store is called Kinder Creations. You might have seen it on Chestnut Street in Emmaus. And while her products are unique, it's where the proceeds from the store are going that's really unusual. All you need is that amount, oh. that much. Kind Alcal, her store, and her motivation seem to bring new meaning to the phrase that beauty comes from within. She makes natural skin and hair care products, but uses the proceeds to support victims of domestic violence and sex trafficking. All the products are based on traditional Burmese Myanmar recipes that we cook in our kitchens. Um, for example, like turmeric, um, lemongrass, basil, coconut oil. In step with her mission, she only employs women who are survivors and also sells items in her store made by victims all over the world who are trying to get back on their feet. She feels helping them help themselves is life-changing. What does it take for, for her to become self-reliant? to become confident again after she has gone through such trauma. Kine was born in Burma, and she says women in her country use items in their kitchens as natural beauty products. Kine's journey here is steeped in education and research into the cause, and now her product line. She has a PhD in human security. After my PhD, I joined um, Association of Southeast Asian Nations as a senior officer for women, um, children, and labor migrant workers. Her compassion for the women she saw turned into a passion to help them. Amber is a survivor of severe domestic violence and is now managing director of the store. Opening up and talking about it is very empowering uh, because it helps other people realize, well, you know, it's okay if I talk about it. And there's a release involved and there's a, uh, a, a pride that comes in looking at where I was compared to where I am. Kind says by purchasing these natural products, we're being kind to our skin in at the same time as spreading kindness to other people. Kine also sells her products online and she's hoping to have an impact all over the world. Her website is kindercreations.com, but it's spelled K-H-I-N-E-D-E-R creations.com. Nancy Wartine, 69 News. We're really, uh, yeah, how about a big round of applause for that beautiful thing. We're really thrilled to have so many wonderful people in the audience, but please, uh, Nancy Wertin, if you would please uh, wave, uh, say hello, stand up. And her co-anchor at the Wisdom Coalition is here as well, Kim Howie. So thank you so much for being here and for that beautiful story. So kind. Let's get to it. 
All right. You have traveled internationally as a humanitarian, uh, as a senior officer for women and children, and you became exposed to challenges that women face as mothers and victims of abuse. So could you please share with all of us today how this influenced your life uh, and, and, it's, and made, shaped your decision to make this part of your mission? Well, first of all, thank you all so much for being here, and thank you for, for having me here. It's such an honor, and I'm actually quite nervous, if you, <laughs> if you don't notice it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for me, I was a victim myself, and it took me, it took me a long time to, to actually face that reality, that part of my life. I was a victim of sexual abuse from the age of six, until I was a teenager by multiple people that my grandmother adopted. Um, she was the most selfless, the most giving, compassionate women that I know. And that's why one of our best-selling items is called Mimo Lux Cream in honor of her name. Um, so from early childhood, I learned that sometimes not all good intentions result in good behaviors, because these people were supposed to, to play with us, to protect us. But um, I guess they, they didn't have proper upbringing or um, uh, kindness in their hearts for, for them to put other children around them as victims. So um, when I went to Tokyo, I was still, um, in a way, very sheltered. Um, I, my only intention was to um, pursue a higher education degree, go home, um, work for a government um, office, or maybe start my own business down the road. But then um, meeting with survivors from Rwanda genocide, um, boat people coming from Aceh, Indonesia, after the tsunami, or uh, people that are fleeing um, conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, my eyes were open. For the first time, I started seeing myself, I'm quite lucky to be a scholar in Tokyo, regardless of what I had gone through. I, I could have gone a different route, but here I am, a scholar at the University of Tokyo, studying with these survivors. What will it take for me to forgive myself and these people that did horrible things to me? What will it take? That's why I traveled. Um, most of the time I traveled with my scholarship money. And to, in 2008, I have the opportunity to fund a local orphanage where I met children as young as um, eight months old. They're in, um, in the care of a local monk who was um, only 36 at that time. And he was taking care of 46 children from the age of eight months to 13. He did not have any resources, and the village was completely torn apart by poverty and um, severe restrictions by the military government at that time. So um, that was 2008. I was doing my master's thesis. I was um, interested in studying the patterns of um, farmers, farmers that own 15, 20 acres of land, but they're willing to sell, sell those lands so that they could go work in Thailand or in Malaysia. I was thinking, why would you want to throw away what you have in your family and go work overseas? What is this desire that you have to work overseas? Why would you trade your freedom? Why would you even risk your own identity? Because most of them are illegal workers. So I started um, looking into um, their patterns and then found out that there are victims of trafficking. They have been brainwashed. They have been brainwashed by their family members. So one thing led to the other, and um, I met the youngest sex traffic victim um, in 2009 in Maesai, which is the, the, the border town of Thailand and Myanmar. She was nine. She was forced into prostitution at the age of six by her own aunt. It traumatized me. I, went, I came back to Japan um, after my research. I couldn't sleep. I could save that girl from that brothel, but 10 others will replace her. There are girls 
that grew up thinking that that is the only life they will have. That is the only life they will ever know. That girl spoke to me in perfect Japanese because she was taught by her customers. So that led me to work with parliamentarians in Japan that eventually passed a law that engaging in such activities is not just by paying 5,000 yen, or, which is equivalent to $50 or $500. If they are found engaging in any kind of illicit activities, they will be sent to um, jail. So um, yeah. Yeah. that wasn't just my work alone. I work with journalists. Um, I work with parliamentarians. I work with volunteers. I work with former traffickers. Without these people, I would have never gotten a chance to get inside the ring because there's law enforcement involved, involved in it. There's international police involved in it. There are local corrupted government officials involved in it. How do you actually protect these people? And that's where I, um, I ended up writing my PhD thesis, which is about um, safety nets built by local communities, including these so-called smugglers. So um, that's, that's how yeah. I found my mission. So incredible. So, you know, someone would look at that and say, well, uh, that's your life's work. You'll be a scholar. You'll, you'll take that path. Um, however, you took a different path. So this, the two pursuits, humanitarianism and natural product creation, they come together to form kinder creations. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the thinking and the planning that went into that formation? Well, um, after I came back um, from working as a senior officer at Association of Southeast Asian Nations, I took a year off. My son was 15 months old at that time, and um, I was already feeling horrible like most working moms do. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was feeling guilty all the time for leaving my son while I was working. So I took a year off, and during that, that year, I met a cleaning lady from Makanji. Um, she was raising um, children on her own um, with very little income. And that summer, she introduced me um, her, her daughter's homemade lip balms. And I was very touched, a teenager who wants to help her mom. So I, I thought, what can I do to help women like that in this community, in the Lehigh Valley? Because at some point, I, I got to find my own um, footing. Sometimes I ask myself, what is my identity? I'm born as a Burmese, but I felt like I grew up in Japan because I, was, I went to Japan at the age of 22 and I stayed there for nearly seven years, but um, that's the first language that I learned properly other than Burmese. So, and then here I am in the Lehigh Valley. I came because of my son's father. Um, and then I wanted to make a connection with, with the community. And I wanted to make a connection that also empowers other women with what I have learned from overseas. So um, I started this business with just one idea. I wanted to help that mom and the daughter. And now I'm helping many moms and daughters in the Lehigh Valley because of, because of this business. So um, in a way, I found my calling in the Lehigh Valley. And, and, and that's so extraordinary. And, and in some ways, maybe Mima is someone who informs all of this uh, because she made uh, such an impact on your life. And so tell us more about that, that your own role as mother and business owner and, and how you have made it part of your mission. So where do you find women who work for you and how do you identify those who could be empowered through kinder creations? Um, you'd be surprised to, to see how many women out there that have been traumatized by such um, unfortunate events. When you open your doors, you'll see that these women will come to you. Um, I never expected my store to be more than just a storefront for the handmade products and the products that I purchased from these women overseas. But um, I have this little space, you've been there. It's like a little living room where, where I invite people, not just moms. I also invite men as well because they have also gone through some experiences that they don't ever want to talk about. When you open the doors and when you have a little space that they find it welcoming, they come in, they talk. And from one person to an, to lead, leading me to another, I started making friends, I started making connections, I started meeting people that 
that were in that situation. So it's, I, I don't have to advertise, you have to be in this category because I, I, I am completely um, against any, kind, any form of discrimination, but um, because I am, I've opened my heart and my store and my home to people, not just, not just women, men, women, children that have gone through the experiences, they come to me and I am just um, only sad that right now I don't have the capacity to employ all of them. And another, there's also another challenge that um, when people have gone through such trauma, it is sometimes difficult for them to be um, taking care of the store or even cooking with me because, um, for example, their emotional state of mind may not be strong enough to take any kind of advice or even, um, you know, a criticism that could make them improve their own mistakes. But it, it, it is a, a big challenge for me even, even now to work with, um, with people from that kind of background. Well, you're really making a name for yourself here in the Lehigh Valley. I had a student come to my office and I invited her to this event and she goes, I know kinder creations, I know who kind is. So congratulations on Thank that. You. But even way beyond the Lehigh Valley, you are a regular speaker and panelist at international conferences and symposiums. Could you share with us today what some of your key messages are that you share at those events? Um, I am actually going to um, Busan um, this October for World Humanities Forum as a, as a speaker again. Uh, my message is always about hope because sometimes um, people do not have hope or they think that they don't have hope. So if you have a hobby or if you have an idea that gives you going, hang on to that and turn it into something that, that you can be proud of. You don't have to make money out of it. You can just share it with a friend, a like-minded friend that can give you an applause. And that gives you hope. So my message is always to, whether I'm talking about international economy or politics, there's always something that we can do to create that hope. And um, let's find that. That sounds great. Um, you have said that you don't define a success as making money. You just said it now. Um, but you're a global entrepreneur and you ship to 19 countries. You even write a little personal note in with things. So how did you grow your brand? Could you tell us about that, how you grew your brand and how you continue to grow your brand? And how do you define success? Well, um, first of all, Facebook is a very powerful tool. Um, and it puzzles me because I am the same person, I look the same way, but I couldn't connect with anyone until I started this business. So there is definitely a calling that, and there's definitely a timing. I could be doing this probably 10 years ago and maybe nobody noticed it. But because of the timing, because everybody is now making smarter choices with their food, they're starting to eat healthier, they're starting to look for healthier products, and they're starting to get more curious about other, other nations that are, are non-English speaking countries. So this woman, this immigrant coming from Southeast Asia, making these products in the Lehigh Valley. Why the Lehigh Valley? What are Burmese ingredients? They're curious. I think, I think that actually helped me grow my business, the curiosity, also the timing. But also, I think I, um, I try my best to be the most genuine and authentic as possible. Um, I have challenges, like my products could actually melt to liquid when, you, when they're exposed to heat because I have no preservatives in it. Um, I have um, challenges of growing it to international um, I recently I was in Tokyo. Um, they are very interested in opening stores in Shibuya and Shinjuku, but um, it became very clear where I want to be. I want to be a mom. I want to have time with my friends. I want to go spinning. I want to do <laughs> yoga. I want to have lunch with other moms, and I want to do some talk at universities, meeting with with students. But I can't do all that if I start branding myself as global entrepreneur and opening shops all over the world. That is not me. I may, I may never be rich, and which I don't want to be rich. I just want to pay my taxes. just want to <laughs> be able to take my son to, you know, activities and have fun with my friends while I can. That's my goal. So for me, in that way, I am successful. I am able to 
to be here, be present at this moment, have my friends that love me here, being interviewed by Dr. Nikki that I, that I, I look up so much, that is the success for me. So I live by, by that moment. You have an adorable little boy. Because I'm your friend on Facebook, and I see him just about every day, which I really enjoy. And I wondered, um, we have a lot of students here today and many people who are on Facebook. And so I wondered, um, you seem to have a lot of um, savvy in the way that you present yourself on social media. And I wonder if you have any tips for us and for some of the students here today about how to responsibly use social media, because you use it so well. Um, I'm very cautious. Um, I sometimes feel very bad because I feel like I'm exposing my son too much to a lot of strangers. But then again, um, I'm so proud of him. <laughs> and um, I'm, only, I'm only one. He, I, I'm, I don't have any family members here. My mom, my, my siblings, my nieces, they're all in Myanmar. And we connect through Facebook. I could be sending them 10 pictures a day. They don't open their emails. They don't look at their phones. But on Facebook, they do. I want them to enjoy their, their relative that is growing here, the only American-born relative that they have that they're not able to see every day. But also, I am very um, responsive. I've, I've suffered cyberbullying last year. Um, a local um, soap maker. Take, took me on social media, blasting with me with horrible comments, calling me names, branding me, brown girl, et cetera, et cetera. But I, um, I respond with, um, with love. I just, um, I just respond directly to the person with, with a kind message. And the rest, my customers took care of it. I don't even have to ask. <laughs> my customers <Yeah>. just, <laughs> just responded. And I think, I think that that's how you can do it. When you are genuine and when you actually put it out there, these are my challenges. I'm not perfect. You either accept me or you can leave it. I think then you don't have to ask people to be your friends. They will be there for you, to protect you, to offer you support, especially when you need the most. So I use social media the same way that I communicate with people on a daily basis. So, so far it's working. When it doesn't work anymore, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, great. Very helpful. Also, you know, so many people see the good side of things. And you did touch upon some of your struggles. Uh, but for those of, of the audience members who are thinking, I'm doing this, I'm going to start my business, could you tell us a little bit about some of the other struggles that you have faced as a, a woman starting a business? Well, um, first of all, I started my business with $2,000. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> if um, you are a part-time worker and you're still paying um, your rent and gas and everything, you can start saving $15 a day. Or you can start saving $30 per month. Start saving. Have a goal. But most important of all, know your challenges. How many hours a day can you work? How many hours a week can you work? When you know that challenge, you'll be able to set up your own budget whether to hire a help, whether to um, um, get a professional web designer for you, or like me, spend a week of um, sleepless nights, study how to make a website. That saved me five grand. I made my own website. I took um, photography tips from YouTube. I took my own pictures. That also saved me two grand. So there you go. You can start your own business anywhere. You can. Turn your hobby into business when you know your challenges. And another thing, don't be afraid. Don't let anything hold you back, especially age. Don't think that you're too young or too old or you're too white or too brown or too dark to do anything. Don't let anything define you for what you're not. Just grow that faith every day. And if there are so many negative people around you, Come to Kinder Creations. Have coffee with me, and <laughs> and um, I have no secrets. I'll let you have whatever recipes you want. I actually give out recipes every um, every other Saturday. I we do this program called Meet and Keep. I invite everyone. Um, it's limited seating because it's a small store, but um, I encourage people to do their own um, handmade products. I don't I don't really care if there are competitors. 
they're not going to be kind of creations. Mm -hmm. But they can start their own brand, and I want them to do that. So just know your challenges first, and I think that's the first step to, to do that. That's really great. And I remember hearing you speak, um, and you said your goal is that everyone is making their own products. Could you tell me a little bit about that? You're such a wonderful evangelist about chemical-free. What is the magic of chemical-free? And then we're going to open it up for uh, questions from the audience. But tell us, what, is, what does that mean, and what could it do for us? Um, so um, I'm not sure you can see, but I have a little psoriasis spot here. And this spot happened three weeks ago when I dropped Clorox on my skin accidentally when I was cleaning my store. So, so that's the very visible result of chemicals. Instead of using Clorox, um, me being producer of chemical-free products, I could have just used water and vinegar and cleaned my floors, but I wanted to clean the bathrooms with Clorox. So there are always side effects when you use chemicals. Look into your, the, the skincare brands that you're using. Men don't use skincare as much as women do, but except for my father. He's, <laughs> he looks so good for a 63 because he takes care of his skin. Um, look, at, look at the ingredients. Ask yourself how many ingredients can you read when you see the label. If there are two or more items that you can't read, most likely they have chemicals. Just think about this. When you see a cream or a soap that looks exactly the same, summer, winter, spring, fall, do you think it's normal? Do we look the same from morning Till afternoon, we don't. Do we smell the same? We don't. So imagine the products that we produce, the machines that we create so that we produce these products. Im just think of that concept. So living chemical-free really saved me from, from, from having cystic acne. I had acne. I'm, I'm not sure I, I, we had pictures from those days, but I hated taking my own pictures. I suffered cystic acne for eight years, and I had skin discoloration, and I had skin tags. Skin tags stopped growing, and acne stopped growing on my face for two years. I have been makeup and foundation free for two years. So right now I have our Thanaka cream, which is made from Thanaka tree, which is grown in Myanmar, which has the naturally beige color, and that miraculously transforms into the color that matches your skin tone. No matter what color of your skin, it just, it just takes the shape of your skin color, and it gives you this beautiful glow, and it has natural mineral zinc oxide, SPF 50, to protect you from getting age spots and sunspots. Men, women, children, every age can wear. And that's another thing. I want people to think, to start seeing chemical-free products as affordable, accessible, and something that really work. My bars of soaps, everyone's saying, it's so cheap. And then there are some people that say $6 is so expensive. I went to Japan. I went to this, um, this production facility. They used a cube of goat's milk, a cube, to make 300 goat's milk-based soap. I used six pounds to make 28 bars of goat's milk soap. That is the difference. But you can see the difference. But then again, everyone's lifestyle is different. No matter how good the products are, if you're not sleeping, if you're not eating properly, there's no magic cure for that. So you have to take care of everything. And I have my friend CK here, who's my health coach, <laughs> and who is a wonderful example of an immigrant living in this country. She's a spin coach, a health coach, a yoga instructor, a mom that's cooking for, for students that cannot afford to bring lunch to school. So um, she is helping me transform my way of diet, my way of thinking, how, I, how, how much sleep I should get every day. So... You know, sleep well, drink well, eat well. You don't need kind of creations. I can, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> well, I think we do. Kind. You're truly a beautiful person, thank both inside you. and outside. And so I want to thank you on behalf of Penn State Lehigh Valley and the Launchbox ladies for coming here today. Thank you so much. And open it up for questions. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you both, Dr. Gutgold and Kind, so much for being here today. We want to open the floor to questions for either one of our speakers today. <clears throat> Anyone? Hi. So first of all, I'd like to say that your story is incredibly motivational, and, and it really affected me 
Um, so I'd like to say that first. Um, so my question is, what do you see in the future for Kinder Creations? I see myself employing more men and women, not just women, that, have, that feel like they don't have a place in this world. I want to grow it into a foundation where I could offer scholarships to children of these men and women who do not get enough kindness because their parents didn't know, didn't learn the right way how to show kindness. So that is my goal in the future. Thank you for being here and your wonderful message, and good luck to you. Thank My you. question it, uh, relates to uh, mistakes. A lot of people will say that you can't be successful in business unless you make a mistake, at least one, and what you learned from it. What is the biggest mistake you made, and what did you learn from it? I'm very trusting. That is my mistake. Um, I, have, um, I have a soft spot for women like myself. So when I see them, I want to bring them in right away. But sometimes it is not the smartest choice in business to work with um, women like that because they, are, they may not be um, equipped with the right uh, mindset to grow business together. So um, when you invest a certain amount of money, uh, you you have certain amount of um, expectations and you want dedication from that person that you're working with and you can't be too trusting. So I, I have learned a great deal of um, lessons last year working with several people and when I have to let go of several people as well because I'm too trusting. It resulted in my um, products, um, you know, different qualities coming out, different quality service coming out because I was too trusting. So. I won't be too trusting again. Hi. You said when you came to the Lehigh Valley, you wanted to help, see how you could help women in the Valley. And I'm a Lehigh Valley native, and I'm just interested, why, what is the, how has the Lehigh Valley helped you? Like, why is this place a place where you've been able to thrive on a global level? Um, I love Lehigh Valley except for the allergies that I get every year. <laughs> um, I've, lived, I've lived in Tokyo um, most of my adult life. And then I, I moved to New York, and I just didn't feel like I could grow in a city. I, I love the lifestyle that I get in Lehigh Valley. And Lehigh Valley has been really, really kind to me. When I... Um, when I sent an, an email to Emmaus Main Street Partners, uh, Megan is here with us, um, they responded right away. They have offered so much help and support and network. They brought in people from all walks of life to introduce me to the local folks. And um, they have embraced me with kindness, hospitality, and warmth that I was, I was looking for. And I think Lehigh Valley um, Pennsylvanians in general are very kind. Um, regardless of um, my, um, I, 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 was, I was very skeptical at first because I was, um, I was exposed to some unfortunate incidents where I get very, um, I get called names for my race and my color. I was very um, scared at first, but um, I, have, I have grown so much um, in friendship and in maturity because I'm, I'm in Lehigh Valley. So um, that's why I, I want to help Lehigh Valley as much as I can. Question? Oh. I think we have another question. I could talk loud enough. Kinda, I, I, you know, it's very inspirational to hear, hear you Thank today. You I'm too. sure everybody feels that way. I'm just wondering how we could help you more, you know, as the Launchbox board, if we need an application from you to fund your next venture, or if we need to get you more connected uh, with the retail solutions we have here, or as a community, like, how can we help you grow your business? Um, I think, first of all, I need to go to whatever event you're inviting me, because <laughs> I need to have my goals set. Um, this is a very um, challenging year for me. Um, I'm starting on my own with my little boy, so um, it's a big step towards um, being more independent, but in the meantime, 
being more um, responsible for myself and for my son and for my um, creation. So I honestly um, don't know how I can make the next step without making a mistake. I'd like to grow this company, where I, but I, could, I would still want to be hands-on. So um, I'd like to meet uh, more people so that I could gain more experience. I think knowledge is, is, is treasure, and I'm so glad that my parents have pushed all those years to finish my education because I never believed in you know, finishing school, and there I was. I, I stayed at, in school for 24 years until I got my PhD. <laughs> so um, in, in a way, that, that really helped me because I treat every product as if I'm writing my, my next dissertation. I do not sell, I do not introduce a product unless I have proved my hypothesis. So um, that really helped me because I was a researcher and I, I want to learn more business goals, um, how to have a proper business model if I want to grow, how I want to grow, and um, when I want to grow. So that, that will be the next step. I'd like to, to meet more, more people in the right industry. Hi, Kind. Thank Hi. you so much for coming. So inspirational. Um, I have a question. How do you inspire women of color who may not have the same drive and grit that you do? That is a very good question. You see, I've never considered myself a woman of color until I came here, until someone told me I am a woman of color. But you see, these people that are calling us people of color, they are the one with color. <laughs> We're born with the same color. I don't get tan, I, I'm the same color. But if they go into the sun, they get burned. <laughs> <laughs> right? So just... Tell yourself, um, what is this drive that you need? You don't have to become me, or you don't have to go through all the experience that I had gone through to, be, to become someone that you want to be. I think you have your own story, and you could grow whatever drive you want based on that story. You don't have to look at yourself the way people call you. I, I don't see myself a person of color. I don't see myself marginalized. I don't see myself... A uh, person with, um, you know, a, uh, a, min a minority, because I studied anthropology, and in anthropology, we strictly avoid using the word minority and majority, because if you go to Japan, look, if you look at the map, U.S. is in the east; it's not the west. So it it shows you how you see things. Why why is Middle East being called Middle East? Who named it? <laughs> From their perspective, they're not the Middle East. I have so many friends uh, from Africa who do not see themselves as how most people in this country are, are seeing them. So I think what matters is it's very, very, of course, it's difficult with all the news and everything that we're exposed to these days to not see ourselves, to not be defined by the society. But you can equip yourself with the right knowledge and put that into practicality, and I think you can find your own drive. You don't need anyone telling you what your passion should be. You will find your own calling. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Thank you, Khan. Thank you all for your good questions. And on that note, there was another question? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Bring in the mic. <laughs> But just so <laughs> others, others can hear your question. You know, I had a quick question in regards to, um, do you have um, uh, uh, body baths or facial baths or things like that? Or is it soap? What, what, what other types of products? So right now we have um, soaps that you can use head to toe. Um, there is one particular soap that my son uses. It's called Extra Gentle. Um, that's specifically made for eczema. Um, we used baby shampoo for the longest time and his eczema didn't go away. Now this bar of soap, he washes head to toe and his eczema has been contained for the past a year and a half. So um, there we have shampoo bars because I travel a lot. A bar is so much easier for me than, than a liquid. So, um, and then we have scrubs, foot scrub, body scrub, a body scrub that can actually heal um, scars and cellulite. So you may want to try it where we have samples you can take home for free. <laughs> We have creams that you can wear head to toe. You can even use our cream as a shaving 
foam that doesn't leave any um, any painful, you know, after marks. I don't know how to what would you call that. So, and but we're coming up with a men line because because people see when you have a skincare store, they think it's only for for women, but that's not true. My products you can use from infants to to elderly. And for example, like our cinnamon soap, it's so popular among, among men. That was our, our best-selling item during Christmas. We sold more than 100 bars in just one week because oh they want to give you know, gifts to, to the dads and the, and, the, and the granddads and all that. So um, how many more items do we have? Um, yeah. That would be great. I, I need help with packaging designs because it's very, my, my idea started, I did not expect my company to be noticed through Facebook or to be shipping to 19 different countries in, in less than a year when we opened. Um, there, yes, I wanted to um, correct one simple uh, misinformation. We launched the online store in September, but we actually opened the physical store in Emmaus on January 4th, 2017. Oh, okay. Because um, the store wasn't ready, we wanted to paint and decorate the way we wanted, so we finally opened in January. And so far, I, my packaging needs a lot of um, facelift. So um, that, that, would be, that would be great. Um, I have a lot of ideas. Um, I love going into nature, so You'll see all, most of my logos and my um, designs are all pictures that I took from my own um, hikings. Uh, but I don't think that can grow as, a, as, a, as an international business. I need some, some more tips on how to penetrate into international market you know, without having to um, pay a lot of money. So um, I will need, an, need help in that area. And on that note, uh, I just want to let everyone know Kine and her colleague Susan will be out in the lobby. She has a table with her products. So please spend a few moments uh, and chat with her. Kine has to drive to Washington, D.C. today to speak at the Burmese Embassy. So she's been gracious enough to give, her, give us some of, more of her time while she spends uh, uh, time with Susan in the lobby. So please visit her. I also want to uh, mention another one of our portfolio companies, Almas Foods, uh, which packages and sells Iranian saffron, is in our lobby as well. Please visit him. And I want to thank the Student Business Society again for their co-sponsorship of this event. And thank you all for spending time with us today. Thank you.